Hello from Ed, Janice, Clark, and Evangeline. We haven't seen you all in a long time and thought now would be a good time to share some big news. We adopted a two-year-old last fall. His name is Harvey. Harvey the RV. He's a big softie. He loves going on long drives, feeling the sunshine beam in on his windows and when the rain washes the bugs off of the windshield. He looks like a big kid on our driveway, but compared to some of the motorhomes and trailers we met on our 10,000 kilometer adventure, he's just a 29 foot baby. Our July adventure began on Canada Day when we left St. Catharines in the morning and got stuck in traffic on the Highway 400 northbound with lots and lots of other people heading north for the start of the first major long weekend. Boy, did I not see that coming when we planned this trip in the wintertime. If traffic was going to be like this the whole trip, we were not going to get out of the province before we would have to turn around and come home. Thankfully, once we got past the 411 split in Barrie, we were able to get to normal highway speeds. One of the biggest reasons we were heading west was that my sister Rebecca still had some stuff in storage in our basement, and according to Ed, it was time for her to have it back. So we loaded up a U-Haul trailer with all of it and hitched up Harvey. We stopped for three nights in Ontario. We knew Ontario was big, but wow! We quickly got into a routine while we were driving. The kids would sit across from each other at the dining table in the back of Harvey and entertain themselves with books and coloring and other activities while listening to music, while the adults took up the pilot and co-pilot seats up front listening to different music. Due to road noise and wind whistling around Harvey's many protrusions, we needed walkie-talkies to communicate between the front and the back. One thing I tried to make a point of doing was having the kids get their heads up and out of their activities every so often to see some scenery by calling out on the walkie, water, rocks, trees. It turned into our trip mantra. I called it out often in Ontario. Train was a little more common distraction as we traveled across Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta. Our next two stops were practically across the next provinces in Oak Lake, Manitoba and Swift Current, Saskatchewan. Finally, six days into our trip, we pulled into Calgary for four nights of Calgary cousin time for Clark and Evie, emptying and getting rid of the trailer and giving Harvey a rest before he had to tackle the Rocky Mountains. Now free of the U-Haul, our bikes got strapped to the back as we continued toward the setting sun. Our second night of travel in British Columbia got us to Swanson, south of Vancouver, to the ferry across the Vancouver Island. The kids were amazed at the sight of the cars, RVs, and all kinds of transport trucks driving onto the ferry. Who knew a boat could carry that many different vehicles? Our ultimate destination was Euclid on the west of Vancouver Island, just south of Tofino. Being so close to the Pacific Ocean really cooled off the inside of Harvey during our stay. Unfortunately for us, that was when the nearly full propane tank decided not to allow gas to flow. So our plan of using onboard furnace was chilled. One activity I was really looking forward to on the island was salmon fishing. I booked a charter to do some sightseeing and a little fishing. The kids loved it. We saw a harbor seal, several bald eagles, and a sea otter. The kids also both caught several fish, including a salmon, a lingcod, and several back rock bass. I didn't end up enjoying it quite as much as the kids, although I did land the only salmon we could keep. The fish just didn't enjoy the bait I was throwing overboard. After our next ferry ride across to the Metro Vancouver area, we drove up through Whistler and kept on going up, up, up into the mountains. The highway turned from a major four lane to a small two lane road that wound its way up and down with a 40 kilometer per hour speed limit. Harvey's brakes were so hot we could smell them when we stopped for the night. I felt that the drive on Highway 99 from Whistler to Lillooet was the most rugged, awe-inspiring drive we had on our trip. I had hoped to continue up that highway all the way to Prince George in northern BC. However, due to the extreme heat and dry conditions that had been in place before we arrived, some major forest fires threatened the road halfway between us and our destination. So we had to detour and backtrack a little and add an extra 200 kilometers to our day. It did take us past some fruit stands where we enjoyed fresh BC cherries and apricots. In Prince George, we visited with one of my friends from college, his wife and two young girls. We picked raspberries from their backyard patch and Evie enjoyed playing with some girls for a change. Our next stop was Jasper National Park in Alberta. We stopped at Mount Robson, the tallest mountain in Canada, to stretch our legs and take some pictures. And like normal, the top of the mountain was hidden in the clouds. Ironically, Jasper was the first place where we were allowed to have a campfire and the park supplied the wood. All over the campground were piles of chopped wood, free for the taking, a Mennonite's dream. And of course we took more than we needed, but it's always polite to leave some split wood at the campsite for the next camper. The second activity we were looking forward to on our trip was going up the Whistler Mountain Gondola in Jasper. 
We were fortunate enough to go to the top on our last visit of, in October of 2019. However, at that time, there was a lot of snow at the top. This time we were hoping not to need our toques and mittens, although we brought them along just in case. It was a cloudy cool day at the bottom of the mountain, but halfway through the ride to the top, we went through the clouds where it was beautifully sunny and warm. We packed our sweaters and jackets into our backpacks and hiked the rest of the way to the top of the mountain, enjoying the sunshine in our faces and the wind in our hair. The view slowly opened up for us as the clouds below us broke up. I had packed a treat along for the kids. At the summit of the mountain, we pulled out bubble wands and let the wind blow soapy bubbles as far as the eye could see. Because we were above the tree line, the bubbles went on for a long time. We giggled for a while, imagining someone lower on the mountain suddenly seeing bubbles floating by. Then we began our rush home as Ed had to get back to work for the last week of July. We had some long driving days ahead of us, first to Edmonton for the night, but not before a stop at the famous West Edmonton Mall. The parking lot was full and there were more people than we had seen in a long time. It felt very strange being inside with so many other people again. From there, we stopped on the eastern side of Saskatoon, drove through a town with our name on it spelled incorrectly. That's better. Then a night in Portage La Prairie, on to Thunder Bay, finally our last night in Sault Ste. Marie where we were allowed to have one more campfire, but we had to pay for the wood this time. The next day, Sunday, we were back home fighting through the 400 southbound traffic. It was a wonderful adventure. We had some challenges. I hope we made some memories for the kids. We packed a lot of travel into our time away from home and Harvey can't wait to hit the road again. I wonder where he'll take us next.